Are you guys ready for gaming night? Yay! Are you guys ready for Dad troubleshoots our broken theater room night? Again! At least that's what would have happened if MSI didn't sponsor me to come in on my sick day and show you guys the Trident X2. When I downgraded my gaming rig to an A770 for the Intel Arc 30 Day Challenge, I realized pretty quickly that none of my long distance optical cables we're working on it, which means that all of a sudden I went from having a computer that could sit in a central location but be used in my office or the land room or the theater to having a computer that was just in a central location. And that's it. No way to get a signal to the other rooms in the house. Thankfully, MSI sent over this monster with an RTX 4090, Core i9-13900KF, and a... a touchscreen? Um... Okay, so there's clearly more to this than just having the fastest hardware. Let's see if we can get Gaming Night back on and see if MSI's cooling can survive in a stuffy AV cabinet. Is it technically cheating on the ARC challenge if I add a whole new PC to the house that wasn't there when Luke and I made the switch to Intel? That's gonna be for the judges to decide. Just kidding. There are no judges or points because everything in this challenge is made up just to frustrate me. So I'm not actually allowed to keep this thing, but I do get to experience what 4K 120 Hertz projector gaming would be like on the fastest machine money can buy and then experience the disappointment of ripping it away from my adoring children. Uh, let's take a closer look, starting with what the heck is going on with this screen here. Once we get past the fancy boot animation and get to the desktop, it's full of all kinds of interesting things. Temperatures, frequencies, fan speeds, and even an FPS counter, which I have my doubts about whether it would be accurate or not, but I guess we'll see soon enough. Oh wow, look at that. Hey, it totally does work. Huh, shows you what I know. MSI calls this thing the HMI 2.0. It's four and a half inches, has a resolution of 480 by 800, allows you to adjust input and output volume. You can set shortcuts to launch games and gaming modes, switch power profiles, uh, free up RAM, which is not necessary by the way, but hey, you can do it. And you can control your RGB. What I'm interested in though, is changing it to a custom video. No way! Ah, that's so cool! That's not really the most practical thing. So I'm gonna switch back over to hardware monitor mode and I'm gonna focus on temperatures and then let's get a stress test running and see how high we can push this thing. Let's give her 20 threads of Prime 95, small FFT. What we're really gonna do while we wait for it to heat up is unstuffify this cabinet. Truthfully, it's not that bad because I did know that I was gonna be putting some pretty high performance stuff in here when I designed the cabinet. These meshes are quite open and all the shelves are actually mesh as well with the idea being that air would kind of be passively drawn in the bottom and then we could exhaust it out the top. But if we don't actually have any fans, then we're not really gonna be exhausting anything. So that's where these Noctuas come in. How to actually mount them though? is uh, another question. In a perfect world, we would want large fans spinning at a very low RPM so that if we can hear them, it's a very low hum and unlikely to be audible over the sound of the projector. In terms of mounting, what I had in mind, as inelegant as it might be, is to just use these silicone noise isolator grommet things that Noctua includes with their fans and just kind of hope that my two fans would kind of line up with the holes. I wouldn't describe this as perfect, but it's actually surprisingly good. Oh yeah, I mean, that's not that no- Uh, well, no one's gonna notice that, right? If anyone asks me, I'm gonna make up some audiophile bull What the f Dang it, it happened again. Oh, these shelf holders are not the right size and I, I'm fine. Also, I think I put all these on wrong because I'm gonna have the power coming from the top, obviously. And I went and I ran them down here. Okay. I'm so annoyed. I told them, I told them. I was like, uh, hey, those don't seem right. It seems like they're not gonna hold. And they were like, oh, this seems fine. I was like, I really don't think so. Is that even right? Oh, shoot. No, 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 no. Um, oh my gosh. Come on! Seriously? No, these are still in, so this is good. Oh my god. Move! Just, just move. Curse you. Oh, okay. No, stop, why you fall? We good? Yeah, cable management. Shelves. Happy. 
get out of here. Oh, I finally caved, bought an Apple TV. Why? Fantasian. Yeah, they got one of the original creators of Final Fantasy VI, which is my favorite. And he did this new game. It's in this like super unique visual style and like a really, apparently it's like a really classic style RPG. So I'm super excited to play it. And finally, at long last, there it is. Power for the fans. That was that the whole point of all of that. I think I put that one in the wrong spot. Oh, stop! Why? Because I have other components in here that are going to generate heat as well, like there could be an Xbox or a PlayStation here down the line, not to mention the AV receiver. I want these fans running all the time, but I want them running at a pretty low RPM. So this little power brick here that I was cable managing in before and the shelves fell, haha, -ha, we got Linus. We made things drop on him, haha. -ha. Anyway, the point is, this runs to a Molex connection that I'm going to be running into one of these handy dandy little fan splitters. This is very old school fan control. What you're looking at is these white ones are five volt and these yellow ones are 12 volt. And then I'm gonna take my two banks of fans and I'm actually gonna go five volt here. Hope that these undervolt gracefully, they're not to us, they should. And theoretically, ba -ba 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 -ba. I just have to kind of cable manage this across the top and it should be pretty tidy. Look at that. And let's go see how the computer's doing and then we're gonna throw it in here. Very nice. There's actually some other things that the screen can do. MSI sent over their Optics MPG 321UR-QD monitor. So it's 4K, 144 Hertz, quantum dot, uh, with a number of gaming oriented features, night vision, uh, on-screen crosshair, optic scope zoom effect, and color profile switching. But the thing that I wanna show you guys is that you can actually control the OSD for this monitor through the Trident x 2 screen. Why anyone would wanna control it here when they can just control it here is sort of beyond me, especially considering that you can also use the MSI Gaming Intelligence app to change all this stuff with like a mouse, which is faster and better. But hey, I'm sure there's a reason. It's definitely different. Same goes for the guts. It just takes three screws to get access to it and it's immediately obvious that what we're looking at here is an Australian PC, meaning that it uses an inverted layout with the GPU on top and the CPU on the bottom. It's also MATX, which was clearly intended to help keep the size under control. I mean, it's still big, but when your GPU is the size of a small vehicle, there's only so much you can do about that. Now, MSI's take on the inverted layout concept, it's called Silent Storm, and it has three zones. The least obvious, but most straightforward zone is on our thousand watt power supply. The fan draws air in through the bottom of the case, and the only place that it can escape is out the back. See you later, Heat. The top mounted GPU that I pointed out earlier is the next zone. Now, I know the RTX 4090 is a massive card, but it's not actually this big. This piece up here is a plastic shroud that MSI added above the GPU fans to make sure that all of the life providing cool air that's coming in through this top mesh is going straight to the GPU heatsink right here. In practice, the shroud actually didn't make much of a difference to cooling once we reached a heat soak state. We sent it over to the lab for testing, but it isn't harming anything and shout out to their support bracket at the rear of the card because this thing is not gonna sag and we had no concerns about it coming loose during shipping. Finally, we've got the CPU zone down here for our Core i9-13900KF, a chip that will gladly use all of the thermal headroom that's available to it and ours did just that while also managing to stay well clear of thermal throttling. I'm also liking this super open mesh, giving the, uh, here it is, I kind of moved it, <laughs> radiator a clear path to blast hot air out of the case. Other notable inclusions are the two terabyte M.2 SSD hidden under the GPU, dual extra two and a half inch slots for SATA SSDs, two more M.2 slots, including one of them that's super easy to access here on the back, kind of like the PlayStation. You take off the little cover and then you just plug it in right down there and an additional three and a half inch hard drive slot if you wanna add more bulk storage down the road. We've also got Wi-Fi 6E and two and a half gig LAN and I guess that's all you really need to know. Let's go ahead and get this thing connected. Shoot, what on earth are we gonna do if I don't have a shelf holder that is gonna allow me to put this thing in here? Well, let's find out. Oh no. Um, okay. This is really not my finest cable management work. So the HDMI output is at the top and I need to be careful not to touch any of these shelves because if I do, they might fall over. Uh, I just want to put this here. Oh, we're safe now. CPU pillows, lttstore.com. <laughs> look, they look like CPUs, cute. I'm also going to put this bean bag here. So if the computer comes flying off the shelf 
It'll at least hit something soft. Hello? Hello? Oh my goodness, come unplugged. Now I have hope. And... Okay, this is not a good sign. Hey, 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 there we go. I don't even know what happened, but for whatever reason, my receiver wasn't playing nicely, and now it is, so... Ha oh, ha, yes. Yes! Oh yeah. Oh yeah. All right. Oh, you saw the HDR kick in there, hey Brandon? And this is with the house lights on and you shining a light at the screen, Brandon. Not bad, hey? Also, this game runs so well on the 4090, I can't even believe it. This looks freaking awesome. Give me your car. Fight me, copper. Ow, 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 stop. Dang it! Ah, yeah, pretty sick, hey? So there is absolutely no reason to use any setup other than this for gaming at this point. Oh, man, I was making that look real good for a bit there. Ow, ow. What are the cops firing at me for? Well, that's what happens, buddy. This looks freaking awesome. MSI's Trident PCs used to be so small that you could hide them away in the ceiling tiles, but it's pretty clear with the amount of heat they're managing and the amount of performance this thing packs that they had to shake things up a little bit. Oh man. That's freaking sick. Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty great. <laughs> your kids are sick. You're so right. We were thinking about what to get our kids for Christmas. And I'm sitting here going, everything I as a kid could have ever possibly wanted is already in this house. <laughs> what Christmas? Looking pretty good, MSI. It looks like gaming night can proceed as planned. Top of the line hardware, good cooling, great looking chassis, and there's a touchscreen as well. And now that we've got the exhaust set up, actually, oh yeah, how are we doing for temps? Oh, we're at like 65 and 72. Not bad. If you guys enjoyed this video, you might also enjoy the more detailed look we took at the theater room and all the things that had to come together to get as good of a viewing experience as we're getting right now. <laughs>